but you really don't see a lot of hand letters using that to our advantage and like we're so good at that and so I just want to help you guys to be able to do that and just show you you know cool ideas and ways that you can use it for your business but then also just around your house too. Hey, I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter, and this week I'm talking to Megan Taylor of All She Wrote Notes, who is not only the happiest person I've ever met on the whole planet, which you'll see in a second, but she's also a total boss at creating products and stuff with your hand lettering all over it. And so today she's teaching us beginning to end, step by step, how to turn your lettering into a sticker using a Cricut or a Silhouette or whatever kind of machine you want to use. And I, for one, always thought that this was going to be like a really in-depth, difficult thing to do, but Megan makes it look so easy, and I think that you'll really feel like you can do this too. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial, and let's jump right in. All right, Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you and finally meet you in like quote unquote person because it's yeah. I feel like we, we should have been friends a really long time ago. I know. <laughs> so um, for those people who don't know you, can you give us a little rundown of who you are, what you do, all that kind of stuff? Yes, absolutely. My name is Megan Taylor, and I am the owner of All She Wrote Notes, which is a calligraphy and hand lettering studio based right here above my garage in um, Elon, North Carolina. And I have been lettering as far back as I can possibly remember. I love doodling. I love drawing. I built my business. We've almost been in business for six years in August, and I just came out with a book called Happy Hand Lettering, and I'm so excited. You know what a big undertaking. It feels like a child. Like <laughs> It's crazy, um, but I also teach classes. So I travel all around um, my state in the southeast, teaching lettering classes, just the basics of how to hand letter, like you know how to do it, how to make it happen. And then I teach calligraphy classes as well. Plus, have my online shop and products. So every I say that my mission is spreading happiness through my handwriting. So everything I do is related to that in some way, shape, or form. And right before we got on, I was asking you about the spelling of your name. Can you tell us about that? Because I think it's so yes. funny. It is. It's just Megan, but my mom has to spell it M-A-G-H-O-N, which is not how you spell Megan, y'all. She made, like, she just totally made it up and literally said that she spelled it that way because it looked prettier to write. So I was joking with Becca. I was like, well, good work, mom. Like, good call because I write for a living and... It's, it's crazy. I did not like it at all when I was a kid, but it, I have fallen in love with it as an adult. And I think it's so crazy and sentimental how much it impacts like my business and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so it's cool to see how that has evolved every time, but the heart is still the same. Like the style looks different after all these years, but the heart behind it is exactly the same. So it's really fun just how that worked out and to be able to do that for a living now is awesome. Yeah, your mom nailed it. She just had this, like, she had this vision of you in yeah, whatever, 30 sure. years that you were going to be able to do this for a living. So when again. I was a little girl, they would say, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, everyone asked that. And we had this local gift store, like, in my hometown. And the girl at the gift store had this paint markers, like the painter's markers. And she would go and write your name. And then she would add the dots and then go back with another color and, like, add more. And I was like, I want a hard job. Like, I want to be the girl at Animal Quackers. <laughs> and, like, don't give up on your dreams like you're <laughs> here I am like I don't do it at a store but I get it is so cool and it's so fun and I especially love like when I get to personalize something for somebody that does have a crazy name or like a crazy spelling that you can't find anywhere it's like I know it means extra special like it's more special to them <laughs> I love it. That's so good. So you mentioned that you, I mean, obviously you teach all of this, but you also have a shop and you put your lettering on products and stuff, which is sort of in line with what we're going to get to today. So uh, Megan's going to be teaching us like step-by-step -step beginning to end of how to add vinyls to your products and to whatever, yeah. whatever you want, really. Like, how to turn your handwriting into a sticker, basically, and then just giving you so many ideas and sources and places that you can create products that not only that you can sell, but that you can just make for fun, like for your friends and your family, but it's, it's been something for me that, like, has really transformed a lot of the ways that I do 
selling and like I do personalization because as you all know, like by hand, we're good, we're good, but we're not that good. And you can't get it right a hundred percent every single time. And so the more I started writing on more expensive items that I didn't want to ruin, like with a marker or that yeah, I just felt nervous. Like, you know how, if you only have one, that paint marker is going to just like <laughs> all the ink is going to release and it's going to ruin. Started doing vinyl, like, I mean, I've been doing it for about five years now, and it's not anything new, but you really don't see a lot of hand letters using that to our advantage, and, like, we're so good at that, and so I just want to help you guys to be able to do that and just show you, you know, cool ideas and ways that you can use it for your business, but then also just around your house, too. Yeah, awesome. I love it. I, I have never done any of this, so I'm excited to see your cool. lesson, so maybe I will just take my face right off here and let you okay. jump into it, and I'll interrupt right. you if I feel like I need to. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is going to be good. So when I am going to create a vinyl sticker or a vinyl decal, I have a pretty simple, easy process of lettering it and writing it before I'm able to take it to the computer and digitize. I am such a paper and pen kind of girl. Like I know I could do this on an iPad. I'm well aware, but that is not, I'm not very good on there. And I don't feel a hundred percent confident in my skills. Like if I get the choice between a computer or a paper, like I'm going to take the pen and the paper every single time. And so that is, that's the first part of this. I'll show you how I go about writing it and digitizing it and then bringing it into a program. You, to, to create the vinyl decals, if it's something that you want to do a lot, I would recommend investing in either a, a silhouette or a Cricut, like one of the vinyl cutting machines, but you do not need the expensive one. Like you do not need like the one that can cut out like full size items. Like our decals are pretty small. So my favorite one, I have the silhouette portrait and it's the cheapest, like smallest little one that only cuts 12 inches, but that's like plenty for what we're going to do. So it's only like a hundred dollars, $150. And I mean, I ha it's like more than paid for itself, like in just one day of order. So it's really cool just to start small. You don't really need all the fancy equipment for hundred dollar machines or anything like that. It's just real easy and anybody can do it. So when I'm going to write something that I know is going to be ultimately turned into a sticker, writing thicker than I normally would is really important. Y'all know, like, if we've got all these pretty flourishes and curls and swirls, that is going to be a pain in the butt to try to pick that out of a vinyl sticker. Like, it'll catch it and pull it, and it makes it really, really hard. And I had to learn that the hard way. Very early on, I was actually writing in calligraphy and then trying to digitize calligraphy for vinyl. And it looked pretty, but it was just way too skinny. Like, it was just such a pain when it came to the sticker piece of trying to make that functional. And so I started hand lettering everything instead and, and using this specific marker. So this is a Sharpie flip chart marker, which I don't use for anything but this. Like it's, it's not permanent, so it can't really like write on anything to stay. It's so big because it's made for flip charts, but you can buy them in like a big pack like this, um, all black. I definitely recommend that you get the black one. Um, and I just write straight on computer paper. So whatever name, um, something that I sell a lot of in my shop are mailbox decals and it's just a big sticker. It's a 10 inch sticker that they, I ship them the sticker and they put it on their mailbox. And so it's such a simple, easy product, but I sell them for $20 and people eat it up. And so it takes more steps than me going straight to the item and writing, but it's just so much easier and you're going to get it right. So it's, it's like, you know, it takes a little bit longer, but then you're going to nail it every time. And so I take the Sharpie flip chart marker and write really big, like on a piece of computer paper, like end to end. This says the gardeners. Something that I do anytime I'm writing like a name with a V. So like for a Christmas ornament, for a pumpkin on Halloween, like something like this, I'm going to personalize. I write the last name first and then I go back second and write the word V like above it. Instead of writing it in order, like the gardeners, it's so much easier to go back and tuck that little V in somewhere else after you're finished. And so that's a really big tip just for layout reasons. Like whenever you're getting that ready to go, it just saves you a step if you go back and add that after. And so then when, once I've got that written down and shading it on my down strokes, all the hand lettering that we know and love, I take my very sophisticated scanning system, <laughs> my iPhone, and I take a picture um, of, that, of that piece of paper. Then I go through and edit that picture just on my iPhone and I turn it to black and white. 
if you look on your phone when you're going to edit a picture, there's like three little circles. And I click on that and then scroll all the way to the right. And it says more. Like, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but N O I R. That's the setting that I use. And then I'll use the brightness, like the light, to adjust it to get the most contrast. So if I spend more than two seconds on it, like that's too much time. Like, we're just trying to make it the black is bold and the white is bright as we can. So just kind of adjusting those levels so that we don't have shadows because this will help you. You don't have to digitize it if you if you do it this way. So you don't have to go into Illustrator first and vectorize it and then go into your cutting system. You could just go straight to the cutting system as long as it's a really crisp picture. So that comes in really handy. Once I get that edited, then I just airdrop it to my computer. So Megan, you're editing right in like the, the photos app. You're not using any separate apps or anything yep. like that. And for, for any other pictures, anything I take, I do pick tap go, like I'll do all these settings and filters. But for this particular thing, I literally just use my iPhone. So like nothing like it's like the edit button on the picture. And so just, just dragging that all the way over to the more and then adjusting the lighting and you'll see it when you know it, just trying to make it as crisp and clear. So that saves me a ton of time. Like even if I have like 10, I'll just that do other pictures real quick, airdrop them, and then go ahead and go into the editing. Gotcha. So I'm going to share my screen with y'all so you can see the app that I'm using. This comes free like with your silhouette, like, but if you bought a Cricut, there's going to be an app for that too. Just whatever software comes, you don't have to pay for any upgrades or any kind of like extra design settings. Like they tried to sell me that, but you're, you don't need it. This is just so straightforward and so easy. So once you have that, you can just airdrop your file into your program and let me share the share the screen. So I'm gonna open this up in the Silhouette app, which is just the software, the free software that comes with your cutter. So if you had a Cricut, it would be the same way. You would have the same option. You don't have to upgrade to any type of design software or anything like that to make it happen. So I just airdropped my art over into this program and opened it up and you can adjust it big or small, but really I just try to make it as big as I can right now. Cause then once it's cut, then you can the size or the height or the width or anything like that. So once you get it in here, you're going to click on this button um, that opens the trace panel. So this might have different terminology depending on the cutter, but what you're looking to do is to trace your lettering. So you click on that and say select trace area, and then you just take your cursor and just highlight your writing. So anything that you want to be traced, you want it to turn yellow. It'll give you all these other clickable options, but you really don't need any of that. Like just literally select trace, highlight it, and then click on trace underneath trace style. And you'll see all these red lines will pop up. So this is really like vectorizing your art. So you actually are able to save the vector step if you just go straight into this program from your photo. And if you notice that I can zoom in, it makes the lines like really smooth. So you see a little bit of imperfection there, like on the P, but I kind of love that because to me that shows that it was lettered. Like I don't really go back in and try to clean it up. You can if you really want to, but if you want to clean up, you need to do it before you trace it. So just like a Photoshop, you need to like judge that, but you can do it here in the app. Um, but you don't want to, if you try to go back and clean it after you've traced it, then it like cuts your trace lines and it won't, it won't cut out properly. So you just go through here and then once that is traced, this becomes its own little movable sticker. So you can pay attention to the, the numbers that show you the inches, the height and the width. Obviously, as you know, you can usually pick one or the other, like you can't really pick both. So what I try to do anytime I'm doing a product listing, I'll say that the sticker is gonna be six and a half inches wide. So that might be different heights depending on if it's a shorter name or a longer name. So I don't ever promise that piece of the information. I just say the sticker will be 10 inches wide or the sticker will be six inches wide or you know whatever it is that they're looking for since the height will vary based on and then obviously just as the artist like you know what looks best so if something looks kind of funky or something looks kind of weird or if it needs to be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller I think you use your own judgment anytime I'm putting this on something of course I'm like measuring all those things beforehand and getting you know good margins and making sure it's gonna fit um, which comes in really handy if it's something that you're gonna write over and over 
or use over and over, then obviously you can just save this sticker. You can even set it up to print multiple stickers at the same time. Um, but usually for me, I'm selling one-off products. So this is someone goes online and they place an order for a mailbox decal. They just need one that says the gardeners. They might buy two, one for each side. So I am printing it, cutting it, and then carrying on to the rest of the steps. But if it's something, if it's a product that you want to continually produce, I have a friend who owns a shop and she sells custom wine glasses and so all the wine glasses have you know different sayings and she's got some that are available to be personalized like where you go and write the name which I think for us as letters is really the coolest because we can make it look so special and like our handwriting is not a font it's gonna look different every time and there's that extra step and like extra piece of work but it also makes it really special but then she just preload it so it'll say she's got a wine glass that says because kids like because work like things that you might need wine to drink for and so she's cutting out that same sticker every single time and so if you find sayings or products like that that you use a lot it helps to just go ahead and cut out several at one time and just kind of keep them in a drawer or you can save those files and be able to cut them and so once you get this ready you can make it whatever size you want so I just kind of I hold down shift on my keyboard when I'm stretching it just to make sure that it stays in proportion because you don't want to make it too big or too small um, or the, to see if you don't hold that down then it might get out of out of whack so it kind of look funny um like stretching your letters or whatever and so once that piece is done you send it to your cutter and it tells you over here and this is stuff you'll learn like what numbers to set it on like all this is just kind of vinyl knowledge that you kind of gain as you go um, but it'll cut out on your cutter it probably takes a minute two minutes depending on how you know how many words how many things you have and I'm gonna flip you back um, to just my face and then I can show you the next step so I did like a TV show and I already have it cut out for you and I can show you how I go through once that's cut so I just have it right here beside my desk I cut it out um, once I cut it I like to trim it really close to the lettering so especially if I've cut out like three or four names on one piece a vinyl so the portrait cuts out vinyl that's like a, a big piece of paper like eight and a half by eleven you can order this my favorite brand of vinyl is Oracle O-R-A-C-A-L and you want to look for permanent vinyl there's really no such thing as permanent vinyl <laughs> like all these stickers will come off but I think permanent vinyl is meant to be used outdoors so it just will work great like anything I put vinyl on I use the permanent outdoor vinyl that way the items can be put in the dishwasher you're not gonna have to worry about the sticker coming off unless somebody was really aggressively like trying to get it off and so that's really nice especially for our lettering like with the little details or like dots on an eye things like that you don't want that to just fall off and so the permanent outdoor vinyl really comes in handy um so once you get that you want to cut and trim just with scissors like around your word and I like to do this underneath the lamp so or a light just so I can kind of see where the where the lines are gonna pop up it makes it really easy to go and peel and then you just want to take one corner and then go slowly and it'll just peel right off like in between your letters right here I call it like part of the letter Y you just gotta check yourself before you wreck yourself because they are stickers and they can kind of get tied up, but as long as you're going slow, then you can always catch it and it doesn't ruin your sticker. And you just take a second to like smooth it out and then you go through this is probably the hardest part and like the most tedious part especially if you have really loopy lettering this I did write in my regular I call this excited caps just regular capital handwriting but with any of the lettering that has the swoopy swirlies you've got to go through and like pull out that middle sticker like on every single hole or loop or swirl and that can take a minute a big tip when you're doing that stick it all in the same pile so you you might be quick to just like stick the stickies wherever you can but then it's gonna take you like 10 minutes to clean it up so when you're peeling if you just keep sticking everything just straight to your skin in the same pile then you just have one pile to throw away so I've learned that the hard way <laughs> over and over um, whenever you're weeding is what they call it going through so you just make sure that everything is really smooth and everything's really clear now it's kind of the time to be able to do that and then you will use your transfer tape. So my favorite brand of transfer tape is by Craftopia. And I order all this stuff on Amazon. Um, or if you go to Hobby Lobby Michaels, like any of those stores will have it too. It, the reason I like this brand is it comes with this little smoothie tool that you can kind of get all the bubbles out. 
if I'm mailing this sticker, so when people buy the mailbox decal, I just mail them the sticker. I have a cute little instruction sheet that I've printed up that tells them how to stick it on something, like a reminder to smooth it out and to, you know, make sure it's lined up right. Like just because something that's pretty common to us, like we're real crafty people, like we do this kind of stuff all the time, but your average consumer literally has no idea. So it's nice to just put that instructions in there just to make it like as, as clean and clear as possible. And then I had these little like, they're not big. I should have like marketing wise, I should have made these a lot more useful, <laughs> but I have these like fake credit cards made up that they can use to, to run across. So I stick this in there as like a, Hey, like use this to, to smooth it out before you attach it. Um, if it's something that I'm just making in house and I'm going to stick it straight to it myself, then I reuse this vinyl. Like you can get like three or four or five stickers out of the same vinyl. Like it doesn't lose its sticky really fast. And so that helps you from having to cut so many of these. I could just cut one piece and go through six or seven stickers. And, but I don't, since I'm not having to mail them, but if you're having to ship them, then you have to go ahead and give them this piece. So this comes apart and this is what's actually going to lift off your sticker. So you pull that apart and then you just take that and stick it on top of your lettering sticker. And I try, if I'm shipping it, if I'm giving it to a customer, I try really hard to line it up and make sure it looks like neat and tidy because it'll help them whenever they're placing it on something. But if it's just me, we stick it on there and we just keep carrying on because I have done so many of them. It's pretty easy to see and to line it up. So once you get that part, you just want to smooth it out and they give you the little tool. You're laying it down and smoothing it out. And then you'll peel, okay, hold on, I gotta actually smooth it out and not just tell you. After you do that piece, then you'll just be able to peel off the clear and your sticker will come off. And now you have like the little clear back with your, all your little letters attached. And so the biggest product right now that I'm selling with the vinyls are these tumblers. And these are stainless steel. I'm getting them from Save a Cup online. They have free shipping, which is awesome. So if you sign up for the wholesale account through them, that is great. And they have them in all different colors, all different sizes. And so these are... Um, I think they're like seven and a half inches. So I cut the sticker to be about six or six and a half inches. And then I just lay this down and then I line up the sticker, just eyeballing it. Like the more you do, like the more it'll just be easier to be able to pop it right on there. But just kind of line that up, stick it down. And then you want to take your fingers and just like really like kind of get in there, make sure it's stuck down. I just keep going back over it. This is where you'll lose like your eye dots. So like whenever you're weeding out, if a name has like a letter I with a little dot, it's such a pain. <laughs> so sometimes I can't even tell you how many times I've like pulled the whole sticker off and forgot the eye dot and go ahead to go cut another one. So make sure that you really get that eye dot down on there. If you have one, you can just kind of take your fingers and smooth it out and then you're able to peel this big sticker off and then it just leaves behind your happy hand lettering. And it's so cool because this is permanent. Like we've all seen those cute crafts on Pinterest where you can write with a Sharpie on a coffee mug. And then if you throw it in the dishwasher, like it's coming off. And this, like you can, the only thing I have seen that messes this up is sometimes if you stick it in your cup holder in your car, or if it just kind of gets dinged, it'll, it'll kind of pull, pull at the sticker, but it still doesn't take it all the way off. And so it's just really good quality. It's, it's nice to get it right the first time and to not have to go back over it. These are like six or $7. And so if I was having to write that with the Sharpie, like I'm good, but I'm not that good to be able to do it right every single time. Another thing I really like about using vinyl is the ability to be able to scale it, like to make it big or make it small. I am working on some wedding signage for a friend and she wants these, they're like, they're back there on my chair. They're like all these wood signs and she wants them all to look the same. And they all have really similar like phrasing and lettering. And so I'm going to use vinyl and I just like, I feel so much more confident. I know it's going to be perfect and I know it's going to be right the first time instead of me trying to like get the right paint and test the right marker and what if it bleeds through and all these things. And it's so cool because it's still my handwriting. Like it's still my vibe and still my style, but it's one and done and it just comes in really handy. Well, and I think that like the part that's really hard for people is like they think that once they write it by hand, that it's going to be really hard to digitize it and then move it over. But I think you just busted that myth like that. <laughs> that is so easy. Um, 
And I also think that, like, like you said at the very beginning, a lot of people prefer paper and pen and think that they have to do it on an iPad to get it to go onto a, a Cricut or a Silhouette machine. So amazing That's that it doesn't have to. It's so true. And I, like, I'm very intimidated by like technology or like apps or programs or digital. Like I can't even get my internet to work. Like we're trying to do Like I'm such a paper and pen kind of girl. And so I will rule out things a lot of times because, oh, that's too techy or that's too many steps or too many softwares or programs. But I really don't think you have to have expensive tools. Of course they're out there and of course you can buy them and, you know, snatch them up by the dozen, but you have everything you need. Like that's what's so cool about doing a lettering business. If you got a pen and a paper, you're in business. Like my first year and a half, I didn't even have internet. I didn't even have a computer. I didn't have a printer. I was doing everything just by hand. Like I would, I would take an order, you know, online on Etsy back then and I would write it out. And I, I would, if someone ordered six bless your heart cards, your girl was blessing six hearts. Like bless your heart, bless your heart, bless your heart. And that's how I started my business. Like I didn't have any of those things. And now it's my whole entire career. And, and I just think so many times we wait till we have the perfect logo or the perfect website or the perfect business business card or whatever equipment we think we need and you don't you don't need any of that so you're using a silhouette machine right I know you mentioned the type of it um yes but like roughly ballpark how much are people looking to spend if they're going to get one of those machines 150 max I would say maybe even 100 um especially if you're able to like catch it on a sale like go online like look for mine is the silhouette portrait and y'all I've had it for five years so like it is like the like lowest level model like easiest simplest one but I like that because then I don't get intimidated and it's like you don't have to you don't need any of the tools either like all the, the they sell if you go to Michael's there's a whole wall of like the picks and like things to get the stick you're fine just like that's you don't even need all that just fill it off I mean face. you know I'm gonna buy it anyway because I, I want oh it God, but like I you don't, don't need it I don't have it all. I don't even know what to do with it. I even have like, there's one that looks like a shepherd's hook. Like I've, I've used it once, like ever. But it's, sometimes it'll come with like the whole kit. Like you can get the whole entire thing. Like I've seen it at Walmart, like online for like super sale. But yeah, keep your eye out. You don't need like whatever the lowest model is for letterers. That's plenty for us because we're not trying to do fabric. We're not trying to do like chipboard or like we all we want is one out. So it's, I love it easy and it's really fun. Awesome. Well, I can, I mean, I can tell you're having fun with it. Like, does your face <laughs> hurt her from smiling so much? Like, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> it's like contagious. You're just like constantly smiling. I'm just so excited to be talking to a person because I work by myself. So I'm like, oh, hey, like, it's like we're co-working today. So uh, yeah, I totally. I have to listen to a lot of podcasts. <laughs> Seriously. So Megan, um, where can people find you? Tell us a little bit more about, you know, where people can find you and what's new and exciting in your world. I know you said you have a new book. Absolutely. So and everything, um, since my name is so hard to spell, everything is just all she wrote notes everywhere. So all she wrote notes on Instagram, all she wrote notes on Facebook, all she wrote notes.com. Um, my book, it is called happy hand lettering and it goes through, which a lot of, you know, like the step-by-steps of how to draw the and shading them in. But I think even if you know a lot about lettering, you'll get a lot of encouragement about life in this book. It, the the happy piece is what I'm so excited about. That was the word. I think we can tell. I have it tattooed right here on my wrist from the book cover. And so there's 14 projects in the second half of the book that talk about how to spread happiness, like not even just in your lettering, but in your life and how you can bless others with your gifts. And so I give you a ton of ideas, like a ton of traceables, like a lot. It's not just a practice book. So many times you see like a lettering book and it's just blank pages for you to practice the letters there's only like six of those in there so it's 144 pages full of like life-giving content favorite quotes favorite messages inspiring words and it was just the joy of my life to be able to make that but then to see it on this scale I, I'm so excited I just hope that it it's just been such a life-giving hobby for me and for all of you like you know I mean it's just fun and it just brings you joy but I'm excited to encourage people that it does not have to be perfect to be good. Well, I will link to it below for sure. And actually, by the time this interview comes out, I think it will be past that date. So the book should be out. If anybody's watching this, the book should be out now and it's ready to grab. So (laughs) yeah. So um, Megan, thank you so much for coming on. This was awesome. And I'm so happy to finally, I'm so happy. You see how I use that word (laughs) to finally get to hang out. Um, so yeah, everybody go check out all, all of Megan's links. I'll put them all below. And, uh, and if people create stickers or anything that's inspired by this lesson, make sure you tag 
Megan probably best on Instagram, Megan. Instagram is yeah. awesome. I'll share it notes. And you can also hashtag happy hand lettering. Awesome. I love it. And the happy ever crafter. <laughs> <laughs> we were so meant to be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, Megan, I'll let you go. But thank you again so much for coming on. Thank you, Becca.